Breaking news. Drone attack on chemical tanker near Crimean Bridge. Overnight, a Ukrainian maritime drone armed with 450 kilograms of explosives is said to have attacked a Russian oil tanker in the Black Sea. The 12-mile Kerch Bridge, which connects Moscow annexed Crimea to Russia, was briefly closed after the attack. A Ukrainian intelligence source told Reuters that the tanker was attacked while transporting fuel for the Russian military and that the attack on the SIG ship had been a joint operation between the Security Service of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Navy. The attack took place within Ukrainian territorial waters. According to a previous telegram post by Russia's Federal Agency for Marine and River Transport, the SIG tanker suffered a hole in the engine room near the waterline on the starboard side presumably as a result of a sea drone attack, though fortunately none of the 11 crew members were injured. The drone attack on Friday night was the second such attack on the sea in as many days. As the Black Sea rises in importance as a battleground, Ukraine claimed on Friday that its sea drones attacked a major Russian port, damaging a warship in the process. According to reports from both sides on Saturday, a Ukrainian sea drone carrying explosives rammed a Russian fuel tanker in the middle of the night near a bridge connecting Russia to annexed Crimea. According to Russian-installed officials in Crimea, which Moscow seized from Ukraine in 2014, no one was hurt but the Crimean bridge and ferry transport were suspended for several hours. The SIG vessel, carrying fuel for the Russian military, was attacked by a drone carrying 450 kilograms of explosives according to a source in the Ukrainian intelligence community, who spoke to Reuters. The tanker was well loaded with fuel, so the fireworks were seen from afar, the source said of the joint operation by the Ukrainian Navy and Security Service. After Russia invades Ukraine in February 2022, the Ukrainian capital claims that destroying Russian military infrastructure within Russia or on Russian-controlled territory in Ukraine is essential to its counteroffensive. On Friday, the Ukrainian Navy made its first ever display of power so far from home by attacking a Russian naval base with sea drones, damaging a warship in the process. Vladimir Rogov, a Russian appointed official in Ukraine's southeastern region of Zaporizhia, claims that the SIG tanker was transporting oil to Russian troops in Syria. In 2019, the United States placed sanctions on the tanker and its owner, Transpetrochart of St. Petersburg for supplying aviation fuel to the Syrian government. A Ukrainian intelligence source told Reuters on Saturday that a Ukrainian maritime drone loaded with 450 kilograms of explosives sank a Russian oil tanker in the Black Sea as it transported fuel for the Russian military. According to the source, the attack on the SIG vessel took place in Ukrainian territorial waters and was a joint operation between the Security Service of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Navy. Recent horrific reports of torture of Ukrainians during Russia's eight-month occupation of Kherson are just the tip of the iceberg, an international team investigating the alleged war crimes has warned. This week, a team of lawyers and prosecutors said that the acts described by those held in dozens of makeshift detention centers are evocative of genocide, including the widespread use of sexual violence by Russian guards and genital electrocution. According to Alice Jill Edwards, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, comments made to The Independent, expose a deeper concern that torture and intimidation are a policy and strategy of the Russian state, when comparing victim testimonies from different parts of Ukraine. An analyst claims that the new military junta in Niger has reached out to the Russian mercenary group Wagner for assistance as the deadline for it to release the country's ousted president approaches prompting fears of military intervention by the West African regional bloc. Wasim Nasser, a journalist and senior research fellow at the Sufan Center, told the Associated Press that one of the coup leaders, General Salifu Modi, asked for help from Wagner during a visit to neighboring Mali. He claimed that the initial report of the meeting by France 24 was confirmed by three Malian sources and a French diplomat. They are considering the request, but they need Wagner because they will become their guarantee to hold onto power, he said.